What's up, world? This is your girl, Virtuous Meek. <clears throat> I hope everybody's having a blessed day, blessed hump day. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook, and there people have been asking me, like, what made me change my life um, from being a lesbian to now being married and having a daughter. Um, it was actually, it's, it's like a long story. So I just want to share a little bit of, with you guys right now. And, um, I want to start in the beginning of my life. Like ever since I was young, for what I remember, my dad was an alcoholic and he would drink and he would abuse my mom and, you know, hit her. And then he would yell at me and my older sister just because he was angry. And so I didn't grow up in a home where there was much love. Um, my mom was actually, um, she didn't drink or anything. She was just a really good um, wife. You know, she would do whatever he said. And so my mom did everything she could possibly do for us. And um, at the age, so... You know, I started I started being out in the streets like real young. I don't know, like back in the day, you know, that's what we used to do. We used to be out in the street, hanging out, running around. So that's what I did. You know, I was always in the streets. And um, I remember when I was five years old, I actually, um, I was molested by an uh, older boy. I don't know, he must have been in his teenage years. But um, I was willing to do it. You know, like, I didn't know what I was doing, but I did know what I was doing. And so for that, most of my life, I felt, like, really ashamed and dirty because I'm, like, you know, I let him do that to me. And so um, after that, I don't know why, but I started liking to hang out with boys. Like, all I wanted to do was be, like, hang out with the boys because the boys just seemed to be having more fun than the girls you know they were out getting dirty and climbing trees and the girls were just you know they wanted to stay all clean and play with their barbies but not me I wanted to be out running around and so that's where it all began like me um you know I started hanging out with all the boys and this happened all the way until like uh high school at the age of 14 I moved from California to Dem back to Denver. Um, I continued eighth grade in California, and then I moved to Denver, and that's when everything really started going bad because my mom my mom was in California, and I was staying with like some relatives, and so I started getting into drugs at the age of fourteen. I started um, selling cocaine in uh, Mexican bars, and I would sneak it in for the guys, and I started doing it because I had it all the time. And, um, well, in this period of time, like, I, I remember being stranded one time and, um, there was, I, I needed to get back to where I was. So I asked this really drunk guy if he could give me a ride. And, um, he told me, yeah, that he would give me a ride. So we were driving and, um, he was super drunk cause he was like driving all crazy and he was like trying to touch me and stuff and i was scared like i was literally going to jump out of my car out of the car while it was driving because i was just like so scared of this dude and so finally i was like you know what okay i'll i'll do stuff with you so i told him to park in this parking lot and um as soon as he parked i took off my seatbelt and i started running and this dude actually like chased after me and I went into the bar where my friends were at, you know, where we used to always be at. I went into the bar and I told him, dude, I was like, there's some guy outside trying to like rape me. So they run out of the bar and they start whooping his butt right outside the bar. And he ended up leaving like, yeah, so I almost got raped, dude. Like, that's crazy. Anyway, so I started dating, um women at that age at the age of 14 i was actually dating um older women they were probably like 21 and up so i was at the bars at 14 with the fake id so i was dating all these other older women and stuff like that and honestly like all i wanted was women for was just to have intercourse like i i don't know why but that's all i wanted a woman for 
and so i treated women bad like i felt like a dude literally like i would cheat on them and um lie all the time and so yeah so that's where my um that's where that's when i like really came out of the closet was at the age of 14 and then um at the age of 15 I started, you know, I was still doing all, a lot of drugs, and I, I started doing, like, a, I smoked meth a couple times. Thank God I didn't get addicted, because that's a very addicting drug, but thank God for that. I started doing shrooms, and ecstasy, and, I don't know, like, acid, just any, like, whatever could get me high. Like, I wanted to be high, because it was fun, just being out of this world, and not being in my mind was fun, so I loved it. <clears throat> at the age of 17 i started dating this other girl and i was with her for for six years i was with her until i was 23 years old and i really 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 love this girl like so much like um in the beginning of our relationship i would cheat on her as well and i would treat her bad and she was she was always there for me i don't understand why but she still cared and loved me and I started falling in love with her because she was just, she was just like so, just so, I don't know, we connected so good. And so, um, me and her were dating, you know, I lived at her house and at the age of 19, I had an epiphany. It was the weirdest thing, but well let me tell you a little bit before this so i remember me and my ex-girlfriend the one i told you i lived with we were sitting outside her house one day and she says D don't you believe in god i don't know how it started the conversation but i was like nah i don't believe in god like i like i don't believe there's a spiritual man or being up in heaven watching over us like that's weird i believe in evolution that you know the big bang happened and then we evolved that's what i believed in just that that we evolved from monkeys I truly believe that. And so I was so like against God that I had a burned Bible in my in my room, in my nightstand. Hold on, baby. And um I hated God. Like I hated him. If he was really there, if he was really a God, I questioned why would you allow all this bad stuff to happen to me as a kid? Like my father with that, you know the the drugs and everything else and um so yeah so we were sitting outside her house one night and she goes so you don't believe in god and i was like no, no i don't and she was like but look at the stars and the moon like they're so beautiful and i was like yeah so what like i don't wow the moon and the stars that's cool so i didn't really care and um just not knowing her not knowing she was actually planting a seed in my life and um she was actually not she believed in god but she didn't have a relationship with god because there's a difference between knowing somebody and knowing somebody you know i could say i know little wayne but i don't because i've never actually sat there and talked with the dude so i don't know him and so that was the same thing with god with like a lot of people with god is that they know of him but you don't know him until you actually start getting to know him and, you know, seek him. So anyways, yeah, so that happened. And at the age of 19, um, that's when I had my, that's when God like really came into my life. Me and my friend who was my girlfriend's cousin, he was a homosexual guy. And we actually went to visit one of his friends. And something happened that day that I really don't want to share. I'd la I'd rather him share it. But something happened that day. And um, later on that day, we actually ended up getting in a car crash. And um, we were supposed to go to a party that night. And I'm like, well, I still want to get to this party. So we're going to get there one way or another. So we actually ended up finding a ride to the party. And, you know, we started drinking, doing drugs. and. I was actually under the influence of ecstasy and I was talking to my friend, the homosexual man I was telling you about, about the accident and the incident that had happened earlier. And 
I never really told him this, but once he was taught, when I realized like why his car got wrecked, I thought about karma. Like if you do bad things, bad things are gonna happen to you. So I, so I thought, all of a sudden I thought in my mind that's karma, and then when I thought that, I'm not kidding you, but something just touched my heart. Like it felt so refreshing. Like when you chew mint gum and your mouth feels cold, my whole chest felt like that. And I was like, dude, I believe in God. And he was just looking at me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I believe in God. And the drug was just making that feeling even more like intensifying. I remember going into the bathroom and I started crying. And I'm like, thank you, God. Like I'm here. Here I go from cursing God and burning Bibles to thanking God somebody somebody who i've never met or even knew what he was like i knew this was something different my shoulders felt light like everything that i went through as a child literally was taken off my shoulders and i felt like i mattered like i felt like i really do matter like i'm not just anybody here my boy. sorry and um that's when it all began like eight years ago like when i was 19 years old you know when i was coming off the drug the next day i was like i couldn't forget the feeling i i found my heart i couldn't forget it and i i needed that i needed hope and i needed to know that i was beautiful and that i mattered and so sorry and so I started seeking him, like, the next day, I was like, are you really there? Are you really, like, you, is there really a God? And so I started seeking him, and I just started getting closer and closer and closer. I was running towards him, like, I literally promise you, I ran, because I hated my life, and I was just running. I was running towards God, and I wanted to know him, and I wanted him to be real. And, um, um, so, so that's where it all began, my relationship with God. Like, I started seeking him in my own. If you guys think that I was going to church or I grew up in church, I did not grow up in church. I started seeking him on my own. And, um, I didn't give up my, my lesbian lifestyle till, like, till what? three years after I was saved or somewhere around that. Like, I really believe that, you know, I could live like that and God would still love me. And you know what? God would have still loved me if I would have continued to live like that. I really believe in my heart that God would still love me. But you know what? I really wasn't happy with myself. And now knowing that there is a God and that, you know, if he was real, then his word must be real. So... I started asking God, Lord, please change me. I want to be the woman you created me to be. Because I used to be the guy in the relationship, and she was a girly girl. So I would always hold her and, you know, do like a man would, you know. And I wanted that. I wanted somebody to do that for me. And so, I, like I said, I started praying to God, and I was like, Lord, please make me into the woman you created me to be. And then slowly I started having, like, mixed feelings towards this woman. And I really loved her. Like, we had planned our lives together. We loved each other. And so we were just, you know, she started getting closer to God as well. And so we came to an agreement, like, three years later. We were like, you know what? Let's serve God the right way. So we ended up splitting up. And it was the hardest, like, one of the most painful ex times of my life letting her go. It was like. I'm sure you guys have been in love before and like that feeling of like not having that person like that was that's what I felt I literally felt like she was dead and that I couldn't get to her and um so I had to like really just pray like all I did was pray and pray and pray and pray and I actually started going out and dating guys just because I wanted to get used to like that lifestyle you know being womanly and more affectionate rather than being all hard and shit you know i'm sorry sorry <laughs> but you know i wanted to be more girly and stuff like that and so i started dating guys 
And eight months after I broke up with this woman, God brought this amazing man into my life. And when I first met him, like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, this dude is fine. Like, what? And so I didn't want to call him because I didn't want him to think I was jocking him or nothing. But anyways, I don't want to continue on because now I'm married. I have a daughter. That girl that I was with, she's actually ma getting married and has two kids and is serving the Lord. Her cousin, the homosexual man, he's serving the Lord. and he has a wife and like three kids i believe he has three or four kids now and i know that life is not easy for him either but you know what this man i give him props because it's harder for a homosexual man to turn away because i just believe it's harder i don't know why but i feel that but i give him straight props for that that man is serving the lord now and for any of you guys who don't believe in jesus my story may be like, oh, whatever, she's full of it. That's okay, because there are people out there who need to hear this story. And if that's you, then you know what? May God bless you abundantly, because you know what? He's the most amazing thing that will ever happen to you. God is amazing. God saves. Jesus is the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Jesus came 2,000 and something years ago. To die for yours and mine sins. So that we can be welcomed into heaven. Now today I please and I beg you to please think about it. Like ask God. Ask God to show, reveal himself to you. Ask him. He, he, There's nothing like to. There's no question that you can ask God that is too much for him. You can ask him whatever you want and he will reveal it to you. Anyways that's my story you guys. Praise God. I hope you guys have a blessed day, and I hope my testimony blesses one or hundreds. In Jesus' name I pray. Que el Espíritu Santo los toque. Amen.